times a year. Um, if you like cleanses, this is, I, I don't want to say it's easy to somebody who's never done one, but it definitely is easy if you are a cleanser. It's an easier cleanse to do. Yeah, well, this uh, this has been my very first cleanse. And good. it was, you know, obviously it's really good to have someone along for the ride, help keep you motivated, keep your mental uh, constitution in check, you know, don't give up. <laughs> um, so that was definitely very helpful. And, and it was, it was an easy cleanse. I think a lot of that, what really helped is that I cut out cheese and wine, my favorite things, uh, a, you know, a few days beforehand. And I think that that really helps to just kind of, so you're not well, except for I did eat that piece of pizza for lunch. But also, you know what helps <laughs> the most on this cleanse is those oxy powder pills. Like yes, I absolutely am addicted. I love the oxy powder pills because they will do what a saltwater flush does to you, but they do it in a healthy way. In a healthy <laughs> way, not. without that horrendous taste. Yeah, you're right. I love the oxy powder pills. So I mean, and and you don't want to obviously take those every day on a daily yeah. basis. But like if I go out on the weekend and you know I'm going to a barbecue and I'm drinking beer and this and that and <laughs> hey, let's say I have an audition the next. Next day, I'm gonna take some oxy powder pills the night before, and I'm gonna, you know, lose that bloating and sodium bloating and all that bad stuff. Well, everyone is always worried about putting on those winter pounds with Thanksgiving and Christmas. We're all worried about that, and that's you're exactly right with the oxy powder. Yeah, you you kind of it's kind of a cheat thing, but it is healthy. It's healthy for you, and you've got to cleanse the stuff out of your gut. You know, like I said here, the World Health Organization is saying processed meats, sausages, and bacon uh, causes cancer, bowel cancer. It's probably uh, enough evidence, they say. It's probably carcinogenic, and it's based on how much meat you're putting in your body. And so many people eat tons of meat, way more than is recommended. So, and what people don't understand is that that can stay in your intestines for years. Yeah, red meat and, and pork especially. You'll never cleanse it out. And mm -hmm. so that's why I recommend the Oxy Powder above everything if that's where you got to start. But again, we are running a special on it. So now is the time to go ahead and try this liver cleanse pack uh, because it is on sale. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of all of my experience. It was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity. So you had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity. And they needed, they really effectively said, we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was, it was it, it's an extreme challenge. Uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time. And basically what we've done is we created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride. It will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, c construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part. And uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? 
Well, okay, so we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, so that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water, the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we removed them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and, and uh, debris, sediment. Uh, they're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. You no know, one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. And it's on sale right now for their main unit, $177. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, the survival spring uh, type a straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. Joining me in the studio is Zoltan Isfan. He is founder of the Transhumanist Party. You are now Zoltan taking a bus tour. Is that right? You're you're going across country with your with your. I think it's the immortality bus. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Indeed, it is um, a, a bus that looks essentially just like a coffin, and we're trying to <laughs> <laughs> provoke a, a conversation about life extension. Hmm. Okay, all right. And we've got a video, and I want to run this video and and ask you about uh, what you're doing with this and and why you would do this. We got a video of you getting a chip put in. Are you guys ready to roll that video? Can we can we do that? Okay, let's roll that video. Okay. Do you have the chip already built into the uh, thing? Or yep, you... it's already in the injector. Okay. So it's uh, sterilized and ready to go. Yeah. There we go. See that, that little pop feeling? That was not. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I've been much worse over the last few days. I How long ago was this? Uh, uh, about five weeks ago. Yeah. Here, we'll, we'll it's, a, it's a pretty big needle. Uh, it's hard to show. Look, there's some blood. <laughs> but it's a 60-second procedure. And in fact, maybe it's a 10-second procedure done quickly. Everybody wants to see the blood involved here. It's definitely, uh, it hurts more than a normal needle. That's for sure. But uh, it's a pop. Are you feeling any more? And they're putting that in your hand for people who are listening on the radio. They're putting a, a chip in your hand. Indeed, yes. And, and what is this chip going to do? Well, it, it's very rudimentary, honestly. It doesn't really do much, but um, for example, uh, with the bus, if you have the right uh, software and the right uh, technology, you can start your bus by waving your hand over the ignition instead of having a key. Or for example, to get into the Alex Jones studio, you could just swipe your hand at the security and that would let you right in. Um, in the future, though, it's going to be able to do things like you can pay with it. Um, you can, uh, it'll monitor um, your temperature, your hydration levels, and maybe even tell you whether you're getting enough uh, iron from broccoli or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to do a lot of uh, different things like that. And then of course, the government can also track your position all the time with it. So that is uh, absolutely a concern. It's a concern yeah. of mine. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'm just sort of like the iPhone or the smartphones. Uh, you know, you, I, I guess there's a trade off between your yeah. surveillance and security issues versus the government kind of prying into your, your life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's always a trade-off. And, you know, I, I was one of the first people to get an iPhone. I, I, I got the very first iPhone on the very first day. I, I, I love technology. And I got to say, when I'm finished with this contract, <laughs> I'm going back to some kind of a burner phone because I'm just fed up with the surveillance state. And so I'm willing, now I've looked at this and it's like, I will put up with a lot of inconvenience for my privacy, because I think that's something that I don't want to give up. But let me ask you about health concerns. Aren't you concerned about the health issues of having that there? Because there's been some reports of uh, animals who've gotten these kinds of chips, developed tumors at the site, of that this is something you put in fairly recently. There hasn't been a lot of, of, uh, of history with these kind of chip implants. Are you concerned about possible health effects? So yes, I am, but so far, at least in the biohacker community, 
I haven't heard of anything negative specifically with anyone that has received this chip. Now, it's really the size of a grain of rice. It's tiny. Um, that said, I do want to say, you know, my, my wife is a surgeon and uh, she said, you know, you, you do need to be cautious that what if this got free and went into the bloodstream and clogged an artery or something. So there are dangers like that. However, I have not heard of one like that. And I think a lot of people bring up a lot of the dangers, but so far there's very little evidence um, that would prove contrary to this. Again, not that many people have had it and I'm very happy that I did it. Uh, I would probably do another one. I'm a big advocate for cranial implants. You know, as you may know, there's about half a million people in the world right now that have cranial implants, brain implants. Most of them are cochlear implants that help with deafness so that people can hear. But some are already um, working towards epilepsy or working to help with Alzheimer's. So I think the era of implants is coming. And um, it's not, you know, uh, even though I got this tiny thing in my hand, it, we're talking on the next 10 years, many people are going to be doing, There's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And the real question is, um, how can we get the public to feel secure with them? And especially, how can we make sure the government doesn't abuse it? Yeah, yeah. And of course, a part of that is informed consent. I mean, personally, if I'm looking at this, I want to know that there's enough of a history with something, anything that I put in my body, whether it's an implant or whether it's a vaccine or, uh, you know, any anything that is new. I want to know what the history of this is. I want to see the studies. I want to see studies that have been done by people besides the people who created the device or who created the, the vaccine to know if it is uh, something that's safe. And the important part of that is not only the informed part of that. But it's also the consent part of that. As a as somebody who is running in a political party, would you support uh, mandatory uh, implants of people? No, of course not. But what I would support is a development from the government. You know, putting real money into, it. for example, through Obama's Brain Initiative, seventy million dollars is now going to DARPA, and they are trying to develop a chip to um, help with depression from soldiers coming back from wars and conflict zones. And I think that's an excellent use of, um, you know, cranial implants is to try to cure something like depression. I mean, do you really believe that that's the mission of DARPA? No, no, I'm just saying. I mean, that's, I mean that's seriously, one of the things. seriously. I mean, DARPA has used these kinds of things, benign uses, and come up with it and said, you know, we just want these killer robots because we might have to go into a nuclear power plant like Fukushima someday. If you go back and you look at the history of DARPA, there's an excellent book. Uh, Alex has interviewed the author, Andy Jacobson, The Pentagon's Brain, going back to the 1950s, the 1960s. I mean, DARPA is there to create weapon systems. They're not there to help people. And you know, when I look at these brain system, these, these brain initiatives that DARPA is part of, I have to remember that after World War II, after the Korean War, they were doing frontal lobotomies on people. Massive front, the Pentagon was doing. Now you got PTSD, we'll give you a frontal lobotomy. This allows them to do this electronically, not having to use, you know, in a much cleaner way. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I mean, again, it comes down to the, to the element of trust and, and the whole fact that DARPA would come out with these programs and put a beard on it and say, oh, this is for peaceful, benign use. I just don't buy it. Well, and, and I understand your worries. And of course, you're older than me. So you've seen more of the history of DARPA. But at the same time, I think we are really just talking about depression for soldiers. So it's hard to see how that could go wrong. Now, I do understand about the war machines. You're right. There is a long history of developing, um, you know, war toys. And uh, frankly, my political party and myself are pretty against war. In fact, one of our main initiatives is to try to divert money from defense and bomb making and wars to uh, to health, to science and technology. So. I'm definitely an anti, I wouldn't say anti-military, but a huge part of my platform is pulling money away from the military and putting it directly into scientists' hands. Yeah, I would like to pull the money away from the military and pull it out of the government's hands, quite frankly. I would like for us to be able to make our own decisions, to make our voluntary associations, to fund our own research if we wish, to be able to afford to buy whatever we wished for our own health. But of course, you know, as long as we send all of our money to Washington and then have them make those decisions for us, that won't happen. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, your transhumanist uh, party. Let's talk about the platform here. Here's the first one. Implement a transhumanist bill of rights mandating government support of longer lifespans via science and technology. Now, I, I want to know what the bill of rights is, but you kind of lost me there when you use the word mandating. Okay, because I'm not really big on mandates, especially when it's uh, something that's coming from the federal government. No, of course, and mandate is kind of a strong word. But basically, we want to have it so that, and this is one of the reasons why I'm driving this bus across the country, we're going to be delivering this transhumanist Bill of Rights to the U.S. Capitol building in about five weeks. And um, 
We want to make it so that politicians cannot step into the way of people's health. We feel that um, politicians throughout history, for example, with George W. Bush stopping stem 